Allen Ginsberg participated in a Focus. This is the annual Fine Arts Festival. And of course, he was, I think, initially contacted because of your work as a poet. Now, uh, as a poet, what is the greatest influence on your particular work? Uh, the revolutionary consciousness of other poets and saints who turned me on to psychedelic experience with drugs and without drugs that have given me the gift to see that our society is completely mad and our government's crazy and is going to destroy the planet unless we regain control of our own bodies and our own consciousness and begin treating each other like human beings again and begin treating the earth like mama nature again. Now, some people express this only in their music, some people in their uh, other kinds of daily work, but you particularly find your way of expressing it, or one way you express it, is uh, in the written word. Written word also, but, but the spoken word, actually, the vocalization of the word, because uh, we did, we'd lost track of the poet as prophet, as bard, as shaman in the last 50 years, although that is our own American tradition with uh, Walt Whitman. And it's the ancient tradition of the poet, uh, going back to times before, uh, before Greece, before the Bible, before cavemen. It's a tradition going back through uh, Isaiah, through the old Hebrew uh, prophets, and the tradition that exists even in Central Asia now, or among our American Indians. People who have contact with their own unconscious were able to see that the rational consciousness of the Pentagon war makers are completely, uh, is completely a scam. I haven't heard it expressed in this form, but I have heard it expressed in the form of an uh, elderly uh, ecologist who was saying right. that he hoped that, uh, that uh, the answer to the situation would be seen uh, by the poet from the mountaintop and expressed and given the light for the people to follow. Well, it was seen from the mountaintop by William Blake long ago when he spoke about remove that dark satanic mill. Remember? Uh, it, was a, it was the 18th century, at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, when Blake first saw that the Industrial Revolution was a satanic plot to besmirch the breast of Mother Nature. Now you have put these words into music. Yeah, uh, I, I've been uh, putting Blake's songs of innocence and experience into tune and putting out a record of them now. Right, and I have this copy right now, but at the same time, perhaps we should say, is it just really right off the uh, press, and uh, is it available or not? Uh, yeah, it's probably available by now, mm -hmm. I guess. And this is Alan Ginsberg. I just picked up a copy before I left. Oh, good. It's okay. Blake's Songs of Innocence and Experience. All right, now. Do you want me to sing you one that's ecologically oriented? Yes. Yeah, that, that would make sense rather than talking. It's the Introduction to Experience by Blake, which is a poem that many of the students know, actually. <laughs> Hear the voice of the bard, who present, past, and future sees, whose ears have heard the holy word that walked among the ancient trees, calling the lapsed soul and weeping in the Control the starry pole and fallen, fallen light renew. Oh, earth, oh, earth, return. Arise from out the dewy grass. Night is appeal to a maddened, money-hungry, junk-addicted bank system 
to get off its war-making, earth-destruction kick and get back on to some kind of peaceful ecological reconstruction back to earth, spirit, sex, love, humanity, uh, away from a police state that is right now beginning to devour not only the United States but the entire planet and its more. Away from a violence as a form of aggression and adaptation. Yeah, uh, away from a, a violence proposed by the state, promoted by the state, set to the citizens by the state from the top down, including as so obvious from today's and this week's newspapers, the violence in Laos, which is a secret violence perpetrated by the CIA, working through a supposedly peaceful organization, the AID program, uh, kept secret from the American public, as the Vietnam War had really been kept secret for many years, from 56 to 62. Violence that spread all over the world, that has begun to come home in terms of blastings and bombings inside the United States, and a violence which has as its source the mad dreams of bureaucrats in Washington who are making money from the war, and their friends in industry who are making money from the war, and who are like a bunch of junkies addicted to a war economy. Now, is this same, uh, some of the same threat of the violence that we have been so proud of uh, throughout our, uh, our history as peoples, uh, consuming the resources of the world? Consuming the resources of the world in the sense that, yes, we do consume, what is it, 45% of the raw materials produced by the world, though we have only 6% of the population, so that one American is more dangerous to world ecology than 20 Indians. The same violence that we were so proud of in terms of the murder of the Indians, who were the owners of this land and who took care of it better than we did, the same violence that led us to murder the 50 million bison that covered these great plains. Uh, what uh, thread does this carry with the, uh, uh, the recent trials in Chicago? Well, the trials in Chicago were a trials, of, uh, trials of that vision, actually, I think on the part of a violence-prone municipal government with its police, as described by official reports, the Violence Commission report, the Walker report, uh, as a, a group of police uh, prone to violence, creating a police riot during a Democratic convention there. Uh, it was a trial of the people who came to make a political protest against the encouragement of police state and the f affirmation of military tyranny through the Democratic Party in its convention. It was a trial of pacifists like Dave Dellinger, who, who's an exquisite old man with, a, with an old Catholic pacifist background. It was a trial of uh, comedians and actors playing political roles more brilliantly than, uh, than Nixon plays his black magical political role. Uh, so actually it was a trial of a new awareness and an ecological awareness. And unfortunately, that trial was allowed to go on by the good solid citizens of the country because the good solid citizens of the country seem to me at this point to be so confused about their own relation to nature that they're willing to buy a police state for fear of having to kick their matter habits, for fear of having to kick their refrigerator habits and kick their automobile habits, their oil burner habits, and their gas burning habits. And I wanted to ask you how this was affect, going to affect you and how you go from here, but we've run out of time. Our guest has been Allen Ginsberg, poet, and he participated in Focus, the Spring Fine Arts Festival at Iowa State. And thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs>